was to take that skirt right there back about 10 15 thousandths so it doesn't bottom out on the case okay and that's what a lot of people forget is you've got to make sure that's low enough and this whole game here is to try to do it with simple tools and no lathe usually i check that up and turn it on a lathe you know or then i would turn down this flange on a lathe but instead of doing that what i want to do is try different gaskets and instead of using the OEM 30 thousandths gasket, is I cut a gasket uh, 10 thousandths, and we'll see if that works. Now the other thing I'm going to have to do is relieve that right there, because that screw hits right there, so I've just got to take out a little material there. I don't know, maybe it doesn't. I'm looking down inside here um, where that that one screw and and then I'm looking at the front of the cylinder to see if it actually sits on the case and it is so I'm beginning to think that I don't have to do a thing there yeah I don't think I have to do anything I'm looking at that and it's sitting right flat on the cases No, I'm not going to leave the stinger on there. But what I want to do is get it tacked on at that angle, let the weight of that hold it to where I want it. Once I get it tacked with the brass, in, uh, then I'll go back and cut it off with a cutoff wheel. How far have we gotten so far with our junk pile build? I put some paint in the muffler. It came out okay. That was beat in a little bit, but you know, who cares? And I pretty much gutted all that so the gases leave the exhaust port pretty much go straight across, deflect off the top, and just go out. So. I lowered the, the skirt and I lowered this just a little bit too. Broke the edge with a abrasive wheel. And pretty much determined I don't have to touch up the cases because I'm not taking anything off the base of the cylinder. And I'm still putting a 15 thousandths gasket in there. So um, it seems like it fits pretty well. I've checked a bunch of times. So... Cylinder's done, muffler's done. I believe I'm going to use these set of cases I bought back in like 2015 or 16. They're new. It's not a short block, but you know, it'll work, right? It's good stuff. Now I need a crank, and I have the piston. The piston came in the mail. This is the piston that we're going to use. And again, the whole premise of this build is taking 15 thousandths off the thickness of the gasket to lower the cylinder just a little bit and a pop-up just to raise the compression a little bit and the second premise of this build is just because stuff is old doesn't mean it won't run for what we're going to do this old stuff from 2013 2014 maybe in 2015 but that period of time it's going to work just fine now I've got to pull these bearings off at some point. I've got to rattle that off too to make sure that's not been damaged. See, I bought this crank a while back. And these stuffers are really rattling around pretty, pretty good, so I'm going to replace the stuffer with a new one. One of the builds I had done way back was they were rattled like that. And what I did was I 
uh, basically glued them on and it worked pretty good. I checked a few period of time later and it looked like it had survived. Let's pull off these bearings. Now I'd cover this once before. Well basically the best way of doing it is uh, a bearing puller. I gotta pull the piston at some point too but I'm not sure it really matters what order you do it in. Now I warmed this crank up a little bit. I did it with my salamander heater because it's been running all day. But basically you got to get the blades in behind that bearing is what you got to do. You know? Got an interesting little trivia thing right here is I got this and I was thinking it was a 562. I built this a while back for a red version of a 562 called the 2260 John Thread. This was a 2014 set of cases and I put in a brand new crank and bearings so this is like ready to roll, brand new. So I was looking at it pretty close and going, wow, that looks like it's the same thing. And you know something? It is. That's a 560, not a 562. That's a 2260 like it's supposed to be. And the clue obviously is they're both small mount. Okay. Small mount bar small amount bar. But it brings up an interesting point. I was going to use this one to build the junk pile with and now I've decided to go with a set of cases I've had for a while. These right here. So I'm going to use these instead. But why is that important? Because I was questioning what crank this came out of. Was this from a 2260 because I had a couple of those floating around or was this from an actual 562? The 562, this stub here is a little bit longer. Both cranks have stuffers whether it's a 560, 2260 or 562 but the large mount case is different so the crank has a longer section right here where the clutch rides on to move the clutch to the proper location. So when I was like measuring Yeah, this is a 562 crank, and this is a 562 set of cases, and this isn't. This is a 560, and again, here's your small mount, there's your large mount. But also the stub is different because the distance from this flat plane right there to the bearing is different. So the stub on the 560 the 562 is is shorter by about 50, about 100 thousandths. So that's shorter on the 560 and the 555. The 555 has this crank with with no stuffers. The 560 has a shorter stub with stuffers. See the stuffers on the inside. This crank here is unique to the 562. The 562 has got the stuffers. And that goofy one for down under doesn't. Which brings up another point. You can't put stuffers on like a 555 crank because the distance between the machined bearing surface here is a little bit narrower on the cranks that have stuffers in order to accommodate the, the sheet metal thickness. So if you try to put these stuffers on a 555 crank it wouldn't fit inside the cases because the crank that has no stuffers is a little bit longer right here. You know because it doesn't have to deal with the sheet metal whereas the 562, 560 a little bit narrower so that the total distance right there is the same 
as the non-stuffer crank without those stuffers in there. Does that make any sense? Once you've got a cylinder or whatever you have glued on with a three bond product, it can be a bear to get it back off. Just absolutely bond is the key word. All right, got that done. Let's see if I can squeeze these cases together using the OEM set of tools instead of mine. And I think I'm going to start with PTO side, get some oil on things. One of the things I'd like to do is make sure there's oil on all the surfaces that are going to get stuck together, you know, and the bearing and all that stuff. This side is marginally easier because you don't have to deal with a piston being trapped. But one of the things I do on these, just like I do with 372, is I'll put a, a, a screw in here if I can as an alignment. Not because I'm trying to squeeze with it. I just need to align things. Makes it easier to hold on to. I get a little further in, I'll put another couple in there. And then, yep, yet again, same strategy. Good. Well, this is a pretty good trivia moment and the reason is, I thought I was getting a 562 shirt block with that brand new one in the box with the right part number. It ended up being a 560 small mount, which is the same basic layout as a 555 with the exception of having a stuff or crank, right? Well, there's some differences. And one of the big differences between the 550, 555, and then the 562 is the distance from the case bearing, the main bearing here, and this flat surface right here which holds the bar. On the large mount version, this is a little bit step further out, and that's why this worm gear is thicker than this one right here, which is for a 555 or a 560. See how that's a little thicker? That's the distance. The difference between these two is the difference in how long the stub of the crank is on a 556 and a 562 versus the 560, which is also a stuffer crank or a 555, which is a small mount. Good to have these around. I got these when I was working on Ultimate Old Man Saw and for 555s. 
but when you're doing a 562 or a 556, which is really a 562 with a non-stuffer crank, you need that thicker one. You know, I need another saw, like I need a hole in the head. So uh, all logic pretty much is out the window when it comes to these. You know? Do them because it's fun. Some people do crossword puzzles and I do these. How's that for an explanation? One of the things I like about this style of, of saw hobby is there's really no competitiveness here. It's not mine is bigger than yours kind of thing, you know? And that really takes a lot of the fun away. Another thing is all these new cases, they're not tapped. So the first time you put those screws in, they're self-tapping. That might get some people confused, but it's really not a bad thing because all they really do is make those holes just a little bit oversized in diameter so there's enough room for the threads to, to be formed. You don't want to go crazy in those little dinky threads either. It's about enough. So moving along. Well, closing in on getting done on this one here. You know, these junk pile builds are fun, but I gotta tell you, the toughest thing for me is to actually find all the bits and pieces in the junk pile. You know? For example, there's a little plastic piece there that I don't have. And it's little knickknacks like that that are, that make the job a little tougher than it really normally would be if it was a normal saw, you know? Pick our way through it. Might have to make a run down to the local dealer for a part here and there, but I think I have enough to fire it off, at least to see if it runs, you know. And then I don't want to cold seize it, so what we'll probably do is spend a little bit of time just letting it idle and break in and idle a couple of heat cycles and stuff like that before I even put a load on it. Put these little fuel filters on the tank vent on these. I don't know, it's just something I do. Does it matter? I don't know. I had to switch this little wire over and then plug the port into, into this. If you don't plug this in, if you forget, your kill switch won't work. On these older ones, you got to make sure that the fuel line is in, and then of course you got to put the throttle cable on, and then uh, this guy goes to this, the primer bolt, and there's a little S that goes in there. You know, in some ways, these older ones are easier to work on than the new ones.
I'll tell you one thing that's definitely easier on the old one is getting the uh, line onto the primer bulb. No doubt that's easier. Well, the question is, will it run? encouraging right need a bar and chain let me see if I can find a bar and chain all right I'm gonna fire this up and see if I got a saw It's a lively saw. We're going to find out, but my first impression is that's a pretty lively little saw. But we got to figure out whether or not it's pumping. It looks like it's pumping a lot of oil. And it's a little bit past 9 o'clock tonight, so I can't go do any test cuts tonight. We can do them in the morning. This is a pure junk pile build. And the bones came from a 2013. It has an EL48 carburetor. It's got one of the 7001 ignitions in it, which is a little bit later than what it came with, with the EL46. And it's got the original muffler that I kind of opened up a little bit. It has the original cover that I cut around there and the new ones have a slot right there as you've seen but I have that hole open because I put a plug in the cylinder and uh, that came off a of John's Red 2260 it's a little bit different color someone will notice that a bit and it does not have a short block but these cases I had bought new those cases came from about 2016 or so and that crank is the original 2013 crank, as the cylinder is. The piston is that pop-up from Little Red Barn. And I cut a gasket from 15 thousandths thick gasket material. And did that instead of the 30 thousandths that comes stock. So it has a little more compression. You can feel it. I'm real curious to see what happens when it breaks in. That's really going to find out if that did anything for compression. I'm not going to bother testing it now. But uh, there it is. So just a little bit of trivia while we're here. This is a shirt block I had bought probably 2018 or 19. And it's not been used. Nice stuffer crank, so that means it's from a 562. It's a stuffer crank large mount. 
takes a large amount of husky bar. And uh, let's see if there's any other things we can see that are different than the new ones. Brand new, 2019. And it looks to me like there's a different bearing. I'm not seeing any markings on this one right here, this bearing on the PTO side. Notice the large mount, and what this is here is a brand new, this year, 560. Now I ordered a 562 like this, but this is what showed up in the box. But I want you to look at these numbers. There's an SKF bearing number there, and I'm going to zoom up on it and get a picture. And see if I can find out the spec of that bearing and see if it's any different than the one that's over here. I don't know. The marking there says 60 and this 60L. That's got to be for large mount. Right? Magnesium Husky V1 1 MG, which is Magnesium Husky V1 2 H. That one says J. I don't know the significance. Let's take a look at the flywheel side. This is again 2018, 2019, and that's a separate radial seal right there. And this one has a plastic, kind of like a guard there for the bearing. I guess they must have had issues on the fly side. And I hear tell that that bearing no longer has the bearing with a radial seal separate. It's the same bearing which is on the PTO side on these new cases. And, uh, also a stuffer crank, so that says this is a 560. If this was a 555, that would be a non-stuffer crank, right? Small mount. And if this was a 556 down in Aussie land down there, that would also be a non-stuffer crank. So you really have four Husqvarna versions of this 60cc class saw. And we've gone through this before, but I'll just review it again. You have the two higher performance versions with stuffer cranks. The large mount 562, which we all know and love, right? And then the small mount 560, and the only thing we had over here analogous to that was a 2260 from John Thread, but they're no longer selling them. And then you have the two lower performance versions that have a non-stuffer crank, different carb, different ignition, and different transfer caps. And on the large mount case, it's a 556. On the small mount case, non-stuffer crank. A little bit detuned cylinder would be 555. So that's just a little trivia. We have a saw. I'm kind of excited about this. I want to see how it runs. I want to break it in kind of easy because I don't know how these pistons work inside these higher performance Husqvarna's. See that transfer cap there? The difference between the lower performance versions and the higher performance is like a 555 and a 556. That's got a little bit smaller cap, flows a little bit less juice. We're going to dig into that set of cases just for, for shits and grins, not because it particularly needs anything. But I've been dying to tear one of those apart, so we have our chance. Right there. But I want you to see the similarities between that whole design. And the 562 and the 572. Very, very much the same. There is a big difference, though, that I've noticed. This has the same kind of chain break arrangement that a 372 had. And the other thing that's different on the 572 than the these right here is this has got an inboard clutch outboard sprocket, where these have got a outboard clutch inboard sprocket. I happen to like that arrangement better. More trivia. Back a few years back, when I was playing with these things, I had these carburetors. That's an EL48. I don't know if you can read that. I don't know if it'll focus for you. The new ones have this longer number. It's 140058A. 
right here. And there was another one in between. I think it was like a 5.6A versus a 5.8. And there's some differences between the carburetors. Um, I believe these are Swedish belt carburetors. One thing you can tell the difference is instead of having this little ring cast into the car body, there's a little brass ring that goes into the intake boot now. Right here. You gotta remember that. You pull one of these off and put one of these on, make sure you put that brass ring in there. More trivia. Part number. Look at that part number. O2. Now, if you were to see the number, I don't know if it'll come through the plastic. I'm not going to take it out of its bag. But that number is seven. This last section right there is seven zero zero two. And the part number reflects that with the O2. The prior one had the same part number with the exception now has one. And if you look at this, you'll see that's a 7001 on these. And this is an older ignition, and these came a lot with the EL46s and into the EL48s. And this one here was an improvement. And they say it has better low RPM spark and more consistent spark at higher RPMs as well, so it's supposedly an upgrade. But these run good. You know, if you've got one of these, I wouldn't just toss it. And I think all this, the whole message right here is, if you got one, like this old beater right here, you can make run, run it. You know, if it doesn't run anymore, and you have to go buy things like ignitions and carbs, well, all this new stuff will retro right back. You know? And will it be an improvement? I don't know. We're going to find out, though. Now that I've got this test mule right here, I'm going to start swapping carburetors and ignition systems and things like that and see if we can tell a difference, number one. And one of the themes that I want to hit on hard with this series is if these carburetors have already been flashed, there's no need to go get them flashed again. You know, if they ran before, they'll, ran, they'll run again. And we're going to experiment with the concept of these are the two most common ignition systems you're going to see. And these are the two most common carburetors you're going to see. Interchange them without changing the firmware. Just having the firmware, whatever was on there at the time. I mean, this would have firmware for the 7001. Is it going to run with a 7002 coil? And of course, this was flashed for a 7002. Will it run on a 7001? We're going to explore that. I don't have an answer for you. I have a guess, but I don't have an answer.